Hi guys, before we get into the video, the first thing I want to say is that, um, by the way, we are sharing the weather with you. So in Turkey right now, I don't know if you want to check out Istanbul, um, but yeah, monsoon weather and uh, heavy winds have blown buildings over and that. And as you can hear, we're getting rained on a lot right now. So we're sharing it with you. We're from Manchester, we love this kind of stuff. Not really. But anyway, what I wanted to say is that we are so close to 40,000 subs and we were thinking it'd be great if that was our little Christmas present from you guys. So if you're not already subscribed, um, if you could subscribe, hit the little notification bell as well, that'd be fantastic. Um, but to help us, if you can share any of our videos that you think your friends might like on Instagram or Facebook or any other social media, just try and get, you know, go around work, tell everyone, to watch our videos, something like that. Uh, it'd really help us uh, just mean a lot to us if we got to 40k for Christmas anyway. Right, now back to the video. Thank you. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Uh, in this video I'm going to go over security of our van. So a lot of people have been asking questions about what we do to secure our van when we leave it or when we're parked up overnight and we're sleeping inside. So let's go through what we've got installed on the van and some of the procedures that we also go through, recommendations that hopefully work for us, maybe they'll work for you as well. To help secure the van when you leave it, or to give you some peace of mind when you parked up overnight. So let's start with the outside of our van. We've got security cameras, the front, the back, and both sides. The cameras relay back to a screen inside the van, and they work day and night. They've got infrared on them, which means even in the pitch black, if something gets close to the van, it's illuminated with infrared and then four can be seen. And I wonder what happens to infrared when you park in a cloud. That's what happens. And then we have some more cameras on the inside and these are NEOS security cameras. Again, I've done a review of those about five years ago when they first came out. So if you want to know how to install them, how good they are, how to um, connect your app to them and all that kind of stuff, then go to my um, linked review of the NEOS cameras. And then we've got a third NEOS camera which actually looks at the monitor of the outside cameras, which then turns it into a remote CCTV system. Mm. Hope that makes sense. So we just arrived at this park up. We'll just explain what we do for security. So the first thing I'm going to do, put the steering wheel lock on and then put the secondary steering wheel lock on. So steering wheel lock means steering wheel won't move and then that on there as a bit of a deterrent as well. Uh, then we also close the blinds. And then we turn all our NEOS cameras on, which I've got a cable coming all the way over here. And then we have these little uh, USB switches like that. So that means then I can mount it permanently and I've got a switch to switch it on. And the little moving camera, which is so we can keep an eye on Coop. And this one has also got the audible motion alert. So if you see something moving, that's where sometimes we'll walk in the van when we're filming and you hear the woo, 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 woo. It's that one, which points directly at the door. So if someone comes in, that one is going to start beeping. It does a setup routine as it starts off. But yeah, that's that done. And then we move into the back. You switch the external cameras on and then you've got another little switch in here for this and then it's just a matter of pointing that up there and then we can check on our phones then that it's all lined up and we can see the cameras remotely if we're leaving coop in the van we'll also switch that one on as well so now we can check that that's all lined up flick your screen that way and then just a case of moving that a little bit to a line there. There we go. So we've got the full screen. It's not the best quality in the world, but it is the easiest way of having remote viewable screens for wherever you are. And if anything moves out there, you'll see a little box come on there as well. That box is the movement sensor. And then from there, you'll get an alert on your phone to say that something moved. So say there, you can see us. See, if I move my arm, the little box, and the oh, other the one, you. <laughs> the other one sees us as well. 
So that's the setup of the inside. So that's us being able to see the outside. The inside cameras are done. Obviously Coop's coming with us, otherwise that one would be on as well. Um, we've closed all the blinds everywhere, so no one from the outside can see inside. We've secured the van as far as steering lock's concerned, um, and obviously an extra steering lock. And from there, really, it's just a case of setting the alarm. So the van's got a category one Thatcham alarm. And then as we leave the van, we just go bloop, unlock it. And that's pretty much us for leaving the van in any location, really. Um, biggest thing we do is look around first off. And if it looks dodgy, we wouldn't even be parked here. Whereas as you can see, this looks lovely. So that's why I'm quite confident we'll be all right parking here. So the last thing we do, just check it's all locked up so flip that see the lights flash we'll just go around check all the doors and every time we stop somewhere if we're going to leave the van even if we leave it with cooper inside then we close all the blinds so they physically have no idea what is inside our van what or who yes is inside the van so because we could be in here and it wouldn't be any different than if we weren't in here from what you could see from the outside yeah um, we've also got a tracker on the van as well um, and I've done a review of that one it's called a trackimo and that is basically installed somewhere in our van and it's permanently powered even though it's got a battery in there so and it transmits on um, GSM and Wi-Fi frequencies uh, the sim card is built in you pay $60 a year and that sim card has worked everywhere so far um, you don't pay any extra for it or anything like that and you can track it as much as you want so yeah I'll link below to my Trackimo review of it um, and obviously a link to the product as well the other thing we've got as well is a little uh, battery powered where it's solar powered flashy light that's dusk till dawn so it knows when it goes dark outside the light starts flashing and then during the day the solar panel on inside it charges it and that's basically because our alarm whoever had this van when we bought it they didn't choose to have a flashy light on the outside to say hey i'm alarmed so they <gasps> spent the money on the alarm but yeah you are alarming actually yeah. <laughs> but they didn't spend the money on having a little flashing light that says my alarm's on so that's all that's for so it's a cute little thing even if you haven't got an alarm maybe um or if you want to buy five of them and have flashy lights everywhere then it's a cute little thing as well just to have around so that somebody in walking up to it can be alerted a little bit more to think right okay well there's flashy lights there i'll just back off yeah so obviously the second part of that is leaving the van to go do something and leaving coop inside um, and really the only difference is we will probably turn um, more attention to the cameras at the back so we've got one to make sure he's actually seen by us and if he's moving around fidgeting then we can actually see what he's doing um, and on our alarm key fob if we press the activate or alarm button twice that disables our internal sensors um, so the rest of the van is completely then secured exactly the same way but he can move around inside without the internal sensors seeing the movement which is a little bit now because it's quite windy yeah, outside. Yeah, just thinking, <laughs> wow. Um, but yeah, that's probably about the only difference. And like I say, apart from the fact that we would choose a more uh, quiet location to park the van as well for him. Yeah, and of course when Coop's in the van and it also comes into the security thing a little bit, we have to make sure that the temperature is going to be okay. He's never left if it's too warm. We just yeah. don't, we just don't go, if, uh, go out. Or, but one of us will stay with the van if it's too hot or we take him with us. Um, but there are times where we will leave a vent open to do yeah. that. But we also have, as part of the Neo security system, we've got a little temperature gauge that links up with it. Yeah, they call it an accessory pack and it's um, a temperature and water or humidity monitoring uh, you're supposed to normally put it on the floor of like you know a kitchen or something like that or a bathroom and then if there's any leaks then um, it will detect the leak instantly or if the humidity changes it will detect that but it's also got a temperature sensor in and that is just behind us here. it's actually hidden under that um, headrest so it's quite high up in the van roughly the same height as coop sleeps at the back because obviously you get more heat at the top of the van and that would tell us then and uh, we've set a certain temperature at its coldest and warmest that Coop's normally comfortable at and then we get an alert on our phones or we can just remotely just go in there and, just and see what temperature anyway. it is yeah, yeah. Um, and the final part obviously that everybody wants to know is what do we do at night time um, night time park ups for us generally I mean we've parked in laybys at the side of the road quite often 
near city centres. Especially Manchester, if we've had a whatever. really busy day as well, and yeah. we've been out all day, and all we want, all it is, is literally a stop off or somewhere to sleep before we go and do our next thing. So paying for a campsite seems to us to be a complete waste yeah, of money. Just to skip overnight. Yeah. yeah, and if we're planning on staying in the area, <coughs> excuse me, we don't want to go out of the area to find somewhere urban to then um, come back in to do it again. So yeah. we'll just park up anywhere. It's again a big thing. Follow your gut. But if there are other people camping there, for the, even if there's people stopping there in the cars, trucks, I mean, they, you might think trucks, oh yeah, the noise just during the night, you probably get used to that quite easily, we have. Yeah. But if people are already using that spot as a place to sleep or to stop for a long period, then chances are it's all right. That's the way we've been working with it. Yeah. Uh, try and find somewhere fairly flat so it's more comfortable to sleep. Um, and try and you know, find somewhere as close to the amenities you need. Like for us, we need a bit of grass yeah. for Coop to go pee pees at night time. Yeah. He is a little bit. <laughs> um, or if you need a bin, something like that. Or if you don't have a toilet in your van, somewhere near a pub or cafe or uh, outside public loo. Yep. So that's thought processes behind where to park at night. If we can find the most perfect quiet space near a beach and all that in the mountains or whatever then we will yeah but uh, these are kind of like bare minimum you know just if we need to where can we park overnight yeah and try not to get in anybody's way as well which i know is kind of an, another obvious thing to say but yeah. like don't try and block a gate or um i mean even even parking right by a bin we found we don't do that because there's lots of thoroughfare a lot of yeah. people walk or people throw things at the bin or or things like that so yeah. there's just little things like that that can make the difference between you feeling safe when you're parked up and or, or on alert all the time for things yeah. going around you Maybe and, and obviously nobody wants that knock in the morning from the farmer with his big tractor next to you saying excuse me mate i can't get in my gate yeah <laughs> Don't park, that before. <laughs> don't park outside farmer gates thinking oh this will do yeah because they start quite early in the morning too yeah and sometimes <laughs> you might get the impression that they'd be like cheeky blighters blocking my gate i'm gonna go move them anyway yeah. you know but yeah yeah it's always just to have a bit of a lookout to make sure you're not in the way of any or the, you're not stopping people's access to anything yeah so as far as securing the van it's pretty much the same as all the other stuff we wouldn't have the steering wheel lock on though because one thing we, we try and bear in mind is that we might have to move quickly. Mm. Could, that could be for all sorts of reasons. You know, police turn up saying you can't park here. Generally being in the way or maybe something's happened and we don't feel comfortable and we need to shoot off or something yeah. like that. So we would still close the blinds and we just wouldn't put the steering lock on. We'll close the roof blinds as well for obviously light pollution that so we can sleep at night. Um, we would put the alarm on. Uh, we wouldn't put the outside camera monitor on because obviously that's going to be bright and keep us awake and we wouldn't put any of the cameras inside the van on because obviously we don't want to record ourselves but we'll put the alarm on um, but bip it twice so that the internal sensors aren't on uh, so if we're walking around to the loo in the night or Cooper's just wandering around the van as he does then the alarm's not going to go off um, but we're still secure so if anyone tries the windows or the doors or anything like that then obviously the alarm will still be triggered by the door sensors so that's the way it goes with that one really yep uh, another thing we do as well um, like we say we remove valuables when we leave the van at night time we still do that even to the point of i will probably leave my clothes at the front of the van um shoes and stuff like that but i will take my keys my wallet my phone all that kind of stuff out um, and put those at the back of the van where we sleep um, at the back of the van really we're quite secure because there's no back doors in our area whilst you've got the garage doors underneath the bed they still don't gain access inside the van from that way so at the back of the van really it's the skylight and the two side windows which are quite high up mm. so it does make us quite a secure little area to sleep anyway so that's where we take and leave our valuables overnight um, such that if anything did happen someone's not going to get in and pinch all that kind of stuff but even though we don't turn the cctv on because it's bright at night we do make sure that the monitor's kept in the back with yep. us because it's been so many times when we're so nosy a lot of the time we, we use that monitor more to see what wild animals are walking around the van at night than we do for people yeah true when, when we're in bed but it's there and it's comforting just yep. to be able to look outside so you're not having to put blinds down and make it obvious that you're in the van um so i like having that back there for the nosy yeah. nature of it if we need it so what i've done is so we can move it around i've put like a sig lighter socket on the end of it with a switch on that 
so we can move it wherever we are quite easily like I said the monitors wireless to the cameras um, but the power then obviously Mandy can just reach over switch it on quickly and see it so that's basically our quick check of what's outside when you hear a little noise but most of the time it's been um, a cat or a fox or something like that isn't it yeah no wolves it wolves you say i was say no moose either <laughs> no no not, not caught on camera devastated i mean if you were to extend it and what do we do in the morning before we set off i will normally have a walk around the van just check that there's nothing that i've driven over at the night time that i couldn't see or something that's been put under the wheels or something like that just check everything's all right before we shoot off and start the day yeah and we also do check the locker doors and stuff like that yeah. just in case something's been dimmed Tried in the or night whatever. or anything just yeah. to be on the safe side but yeah, it's all, it's all two second stuff, I suppose, isn't it? Mm. But so far, utilising all these little tricks, tips, or whatever that we use, um, we've been fairly okay. There's been a couple of occasions where we've moved, um, but it's normally for our peace of mind, like when we were near Brancastle. Yeah. And the workmen turned up at sort of half two in the morning and started offloading the trucks and setting up all the trucks that far away from the van in the middle yeah. of an empty car park so yeah sometimes you just might have to move and that's when having the van set up ready to go um, make sure the steering wheel locks you just pull the blinds back and off we go five minutes then yep so it really pays off yeah and i think a lot of the times as well and it's not for security reasons but we always have a few choices of where to stay yeah so it's always happy it's always good to have like a fallback if you're not too sure about where you are just have a, a choice of things yeah. to go to around there even if one is a services or a lay-by or a garage or something that you know there's going to be room yeah so if you have to move from a space then you've got somewhere that is at least secure for you to take yeah as to. you're driving up to your final park up for the day uh, just have a quick brief look around uh, Daz Urban Motorhomes made a really good video recently he stayed in a is it Krispy Kremes yeah so he gave you an idea of where he would park up so he's driving down the road pointing out places to him that's all right the type of industrial estate or housing estate or park areas or whatever that he would use as a backup should his final destination not work so it's worth yeah. checking it out as and well. he tells you why as well he yeah. explains it as you're driving down the road and what you would keep an eye out for and why it's good and why something isn't good so they are really good to watch actually. yeah yeah because we've been doing this for two years now he's been doing it for four four years four nearly five years maybe so a lot of experience there to check yeah, out anyway. definitely but i think the thing is with all of these security things i find is it makes me feel better mm. so even if it seems overkill in what we do especially if we're on a campsite and we're still doing all of this stuff and it is in a like a really secure location the comfort value for me to be able to then sleep at night and yeah. knowing that you know we're looked after and obviously coop is okay and and all of that kind of thing i think peace of mind is invaluable so yeah. it's only a few things that we need to do to get that so it's well worth doing isn't it yeah and it's our routine now so it doesn't seem abnormal to us it doesn't seem that we're oh we better make sure that's done and make sure that's done it's just normal now we don't really bother yep and it's yeah. just one of those things you go cameras on yep checked them yep lock the door yep got your keys yep that's, <laughs> that's, it. Just, that's just it and then and then, then, it just and then go goes. back and check the door again yeah uh, or, or i'll go back and actually put the cameras on because i haven't i've been talking instead so yeah, yeah. yeah. All, all those things all those things <laughs> the joys of fan life oh i wouldn't have it any other way no very true mm -hmm. so like i said hope that's helped if you do have any questions or your own comments please do leave them down below and um yeah we shall see you on the next video i we will take see care guys. guys bye, bye.